Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to NPTEL online course on structure, form and architecture, the synergy. Uh, today we are at lecture number 24 and we will be talking on dome structures. So, in the last lecture we have seen uh, the you know type of walls, they use the fundamentals and we also came to know about uh, the construction of a vault, it is basically a series of arches. Now, in this uh, we will also uh, get to know about the evolve uh, of that particular dome and it is again in, uh, in this case like we have to take uh, an arch and then we revolve it. So, we just rotate it 360 degree we can get the shape or else we can just cut a hollow sphere uh, and we can get it. So, we will get into this uh, um, uh, dome and we will try to understand the materials, the use of that, different components of a dome, uh, the purpose of using dome and then different types with some images, some examples. So, let us get started this lecture. So, uh, this is a very introductory slide. So, if you just search dome, the first in uh, the Google, so what exactly the definition you will get from the dictionary.com is a rounded vault uh, forming the roof of a building or a structure typically with a circular base. So, what exactly it is like uh, a rounded vault is basically when we create this space, uh, it is the vault even the cross arch a uh, vault is being uh, represented like a dome and then it is normally being used and the circular base. So, in this circular base I take a rise, this is one arch and I just evolve it 360 degree. So, multiple arch like this we just try to create and then basically whatever the form we will get that is the dome. Uh, like this is some example that uh, is there with us. So, this is if you just try to simplify it. So, it is some dome not really having a very semicircular, uh, semi semispherical, uh, hemispherical dome. So, uh, like there is some other components added. So, we will come to that as well. Now, here you can see uh, a crystal dome in this. So, dome is uh, an architectural element that resembles hollow upper half of a sphere. So, that already explained. Starting from a prehistory to the modern age, dome have been constructed using mart, okay. So, that we cannot ignore the construction of igloo that is basically the dome structure. Then wood, brick, concrete, metal, glass, plastic and now like anything. Even you know uh, we all have played with the plastic ball or the um, some kind of uh, cricket ball. So, if you cut this that will be a solid dome, but we all are aware about this particular form. So, dome is formed through uh, revolution of uh, an arch, self supporting stabilized by the force of gravity acting on the self weight hold them in compression, uh, useful to cover the large span, it is again the same. So, starting from the dome that uh, we can see in Taj Mahal or maybe the dome that uh, uh, we have seen in Pantheon in Rome. So, it is basically helping us to have a columnless structure. So, vault doing the same purpose, but for the corridor or maybe a area of that kind, but dome being used for a larger span. The dome load transfer, how it transfer the load? So, let us understand this. And here uh, you get a schematic and corresponding color will have the indication, the type of force that it is dealing with. So, the component that we have uh, is basically this uh, meridional uh, portion. So, these are uh, your, your uh, meridional uh, component of your dome and that is taking the compression. So, basically if you take one uh, you know maybe a plastic ball or something a ball made of a light material and you try to put the pressure from the top. So, these fibers are always in compression, then what you have the upper loop. So, upper loop they will also try to compress, so they will also be in compression, but the bottom surface when you press it, okay, the bottom surface will always try to go away from each other 
and then that is why it is in tension and then the vertical and lateral load transferred to the down. So, this kind of you know uh, what we can uh, compare with uh, uh, your latitude longitude similar kind of thing. Uh, so, you have a series of compression and tension which can be dealt with the dome. So, this is one example that uh, I picked up. This is a dome made of some you know temporary wood and then the grass or something. It is very old uh, kind of practice to make this kind of structure, but the overall form is again a dome shape. So, it basically giving you a volume as well as like uh, you do not need to really give much support uh, in between. Move on. So, this is some famous example and I am repeating this uh, example in many cases because it is oath of repeating uh, of its many features. We can explain many things with this. The use of uh, like this lighting is one component, but here the intention is to show you the dome. So, this dome is basically uh, the dome for the pantheon and then here like it can accommodate uh, the gathering. So, this is being used to have a like column less space. This is something uh, really I uh, need no explanation the beauty of it, the aesthetics of it and the centralized dome. So, basically this is uh, a type of dome we refer at the onion dome we will come to that when we discuss it. So, this is another application of the dome. This is uh, your Hagia Sophia. So, here also you can see the series of dome uh, in a different pattern. So, time to time from the history to the modern the pattern of dome, the ornamentation of dome it differs and in the modern age also we can uh, have something which is a pneumatic dome. That means, uh, somewhere we also discuss the typology the pneumatic means it is filled with the air and then uh, create a form of a dome. This is another example of a dome, but here you can see that instead of your lattice and the hoop you have something different like a triangulation of that multiple triangles they form it. So, this kind of form is also called geodesic uh, dome. So, we will also discuss this when the type of dome will be discussed in upcoming slides. Now, coming to the elements of dome. So, here you have uh, some information which are little bit uh, not similar to the vault component or arch. So, we have coffer, we have cupola, lantern, oculus, rotunda, tholobate, pen, uh, pendentif, then squinch and whispering gallery. So, what exactly they are? Though the names are a uh, little bit uh, you know difficult to remember I know, but now, uh, looking at the photo we will try to uh, get uh, to identify what exactly and I am sure that um, we can really uh, get idea with uh, the you know the sum of the forms and the names and the what exactly it means. So, before that uh, in this it is very simple. So, the lantern is the upper part that you know the initial picture that I have shown here uh, at the very beginning slide. So, this particular portion is now referring as your lantern it is similar to that and not only uh, looking at uh, the shape, but it has a function as well. So, this will be used to create some puncture. So, light can uh, enter to this and then the interior can be getting some daylight. So, like when we have a lantern uh, something like this we hold it and then there is a lamp. So, we can get the light it is something like that. The cupola is a similar kind of uh, thing that we will do and this is basically when uh, a dome to be placed on a you know a part of a cylinder. So, this is basically the drum shape. Then whenever uh, you have to uh, change like you have to place a different kind of dome on a square base. So, you have to make changes at that junction. So, pendant if will be formed and squinch of arches uh, that will be formed. So, let us uh, try to discuss it. Now, coffer is basically the series of sunken panel. So, this is basically what you can see uh, in order to reduce the volume of uh, the self weight of the dome we can also have something like this. So, this is basically the coffer 
uh, you know uh, sometimes we call in this case it is the component is called the coffer part of that we also refer to the coffer ceiling. So, then where we can really reduce the volume of uh, the you know um, concrete. So, suppose this is a solid section and then uh, if you use the coffer slab is basically something like this. So, looking at the uh, you know load it can carry. So, we can reduce this volume. So, this is basically the cross section I am referring. So, it being used in the modern building uh, also the coffer is the terminology to just represent the series of sunken panel. Then cupola is basically uh, what we can uh, relate with a cup. So, the shape if you just put the cup uh, in this position uh, uh, something like this. So, it is uh, the small most often dome like uh, structure on top of the building. So, something like this you just put on top of it. So, in many buildings like where you have a very uh, similar roof pattern and top of that you can use this. Move to that the uh, lantern cupola used to allow the daylight it is the similar thing that uh, the top of it the cupola in this case having the uh, transparent glass. So, that light daylight can easily enter and not only the daylight sometimes even at night time you can uh, get uh, good uh, you know uh, lighting uh, uh, some ambience good uh, view of this particular building. Now, coming to the oculus this is uh, where the circular opening in the center of a dome or a wall. So, that we can see in again the example this is basically the view uh, recreated from again the pantheon and this particular uh, puncture. So, if you go back to the example of this, so this is basically uh, the oculus. Now, uh, what is rotunda? Rotunda is basically any building with a circular ground plan and covered by a dome. So, instead of many buildings you will find that a dome is placed at the center. So, that it will look like something like this or maybe if you use some drum. So, it may look like this, but here it is the same where the plan is itself a cylindrical form or it is basically the whole volume is a cylindrical form and the plan is circular. So, you can see uh, if you just try to uh, make the drawing of this is a circular plan and then in top of it you have this. Then uh, coming to the tholobat, uh, it is uh, the upright part of a building drum like on which dome is raised. So, this portion is uh, basically the tholobat. Coming to the pendentive uh, that okay, this is basically also alternatively that we have seen it is called drum. So, pendentive is basically constructive device which allows the placement of a circular dome on a square room. So, basically if you have uh, uh, like some room like this and when you place the dome on top of it. So, it is basically you cannot uh, you can take uh, the midpoint of that you can make the circle and you can make the dome. But now uh, this particular portion to be managed. So, in that case what uh, we can do we can just take out those material or we just create the portion ok. We transform that portion and this particular puncture where form we will take out uh, the material that will be your uh, pendentive. So, this is basically the pendentive be created. Where the squinge is something where construction filling in the upper angles of a square room to form a base to receive a dome. So, again uh, here some things we have to fill. So, that is the squinge. Whispering gallery is something where it is a circular or hemispherical enclosure often beneath the dome. Okay. So, it is basically a area where you can stand, where you can go and which will help to whisper uh, and if you just make a noise in this and that will you know take uh, surrounding sound and you can stand here and listen to this. So, this being there even in India this kind of things we can observe in uh, your gold gambuch. Uh, in south. So, um, if you have visited that also you experience this or else in upcoming days if you plan to visit you can get it. And this is something uh, which is also a part of a dome sometimes where we can create this kind of scenario. 
Coming to the materials, so as I already mentioned, it can be mud, it can be snow, it can be brick masonry, it can be stone masonry, wood, concrete or steel. And in this case, you can see this uh, being created, a uh, temporary dome being created with the bamboo. So, uh, this is how beautifully they have been creating it and this is igloo being uh, formed with a compressed ice block and then this dome being created. Now, the types of dome. So, go to different search, you will get different kind of list the dome. Uh, the my point is here I have uh, specified the domes which are very popular in nature, but definitely there will be some addition to this list and you I am uh, really I will be happy to uh, uh, you know uh, listen from you if I just missed out some of the dome and you can add on uh, to this particular list. So, it started with the corbelled roof crossed arch dome which is also like uh, the ribbed vault that we discussed the geodesic dome, onion dome, oval dome, rotational dome, saucer dome this is really interesting, umbrella dome, cable net dome, inflated domes. So, what exactly they are um, and how to really remember. So, I will try uh, to just relate with the terminology and uh, your the vault. So, let uh, start with the corbel dome. So, corbel dome is basically where we put uh, the layers of your uh, brick or stone one after another okay, and then we just take some kind of offset and we just create this type of you know hollow space inside. So, the more uh, offset you gave it will look very like pyramidical shape, but if you uh, reduce this particular space between two layers. So, definitely it will give you uh, the form of a dome. So, this is something uh, very old kind of structure where without without any uh, mortar this being created and here it is something where in a temple this being again created to make a circular form. And final ornamentation is a different thing, but basic layout is uh, the same. So, we take the span, we have a like a particular cylindrical form and all. So, we just try to fill the first layer, then the second layer, third layer, fourth layer. So, likewise we will go for this kind of corbel dome. Though the co cost as dome is basically where uh, it is the similar that we have seen that multiple arches they are creating an octagonal shape or sometimes even more arches will give more polygonal shape uh, and then this is being supported with some kind of you know wall or something. So, this dome being created is the crossed arch dome. So, this one uh, is one of the earliest type of ribbed vault where ribs instead of meeting the dome center are intervened uh, to the polygons that we have also seen in that ribbed and uh, clustered vault. Coming to the geodesic, I have shown you one example. Uh, let uh, take this example, this is a uh, model where like triangle being placed one after another to create this kind of form. Another example that I can give you the formation of the dome that uh, many of us we also like uh, played football or maybe we watch football. So, football if you see uh, like basically it is a sphere. Okay, but uh, in formation of this what we need, we need pentagons uh, and then we need uh, hexagons. So, with one pentagon, so we just create uh, the five hexagons and like that we create the uh, you know this particular curvature. But instead of that if you use the triangle and uh, we can just create this kind of volume. So, this is also uh, very popular nowadays many such steel structure geodesic dome being created. So, spear like structure consisting of a network of different triangles provide a safe balancing between the structures. This is very useful, these joints are how it is being made, those are very crucial. So, form anchor how it is being placed to form this. So, the application of this kind of dome is quite modern and uh, there are many examples that uh, we can come across. So, this is one of that. Coming to the onion dome is uh, the easiest thing to remember. We all know the onion and the shape is something like this. So, this is a white onion. So, the color may vary, but this shape I just place it here. Earlier I have given example of Taj Mahal. Now, this is some thing like this. Even if you take example of the Disney uh, land. 
uh, so there also you get these towers and then the form is something like this. Even we have something seen in the those documentary and video of Aladdin or some uh, Disney movie. So, this is something where we can get it. So, this is basically the cathedral domes uh, from Russia. So, where the form is being easily visible. So, it is look like a golden onion, uh, but yes this can also be used as a form. Coming to the oval, uh, as it is coming from the shape of uh, oval, so like something like this. So, here uh, sometimes for some uh, interior space uh, the change the plan instead of a um, circle uh, the profile is the oval. So, basically a oval dome may be defined as a dome whose plan or profile has an oval form. The geometry is defined as using combination of circular arch that uh, transition at uh, you know tangential points. So, basically in this case we have to reduce it like this, so that we will finally get the oval form and the series of ovals. So, this is one oval, this is another one and this being connected uh, to that. So, plan here it is uh, basically a wall and then on, on top of it we have this. So, this is oval. Now, coming to the rotational dome is basically where I have started like we take with one particular um, you know circular form and this is center you take a rise then you take one arch and then you try to revolve it uh, 360 degree. So, after revolving whatever you will get is basically uh, hemispherical dome if you take this arch uh, like and the rise in that panel. So, it is basically the half cut of a sphere. So, it is uh, uh, something the example that is from the uh, dome of the Jerusalem rock shine. So, here it is example of the rotation. So, rotating uh, your uh, you know arch. So, if you find that if this are visible a few of the arches uh, merging to a particular point, if you increase more. So, basically it is starting from a point and ending to the same point the revolve of this. So, that is the rotational dome. Saucer dome is basically where it is also referred as a segmental dome. So, uh, we talked about the rise. So, this is your support and then whatever the height will get. So, this is basically the rise. So, for the saucer dome it is a segmental. So, the rise is something which is not lying in this line maybe from uh, you know some bottom of that and from there we make this particular arch. So, the center of this arch uh, is basically below that. So, uh, a dome having uh, the form of a segment of a sphere with uh, the center well below the springing line. So, uh, this is the line that we have talked about the springing line uh, even in the vault. So, this particular portion is the saucer vault. So, here you can see that how flat almost it is uh, there. So, it is the saucer dome. Coming to the umbrella dome, it is also known as ripped or parachute dome. So, uh, what exactly it is? Uh, we know the form of a parachute is something like this and also the umbrella. So, where it is uh, basically started with a uh, very simple dome and then the ripped will actually guide it. Uh, to uh, like take a form of this umbrella. So, this is uh, if you just take this example, this is United States Capitol from US. So, it uh, the example of this umbrella dome. Coming to the cable net dome, so it is also very important that this particular millennium dome uh, we have discussed earlier as well in when we discussed about the tensile structure. So, in this case uh, this uh, vertical members they are used as a compressive members and uh, very finely if you see these images. So, they are fixed with some cables ok. So, multiple cables they are giving the tension and this is the fabric material. So, huge dome being created with very few number of such uh, post or mast uh, we uh, refer technically the mast it is only taking the compression and the rest of they are tensioned. So, with the cable this can also be formed the cable net structure can adopt an overall dome shape ok albeit individual section are generally flat or anticlastic form. 
So, we have discussed the anticlastic thing, but again we are uh, just discussing it. Anticlastic form is when the uh, curvature of plane, two curvatures of the plane, they are acting in opposite direction. So, basically I have given example of a chips. So, it is sometimes you just take any example of a chip. So, it is something like this, uh, something like this. So, here I am trying to explain this uh, with this example. So, this is anticlastic means uh, you have a curvature of this particular arch like this and then uh, you have curvature of the top like this. So, this is basically the anticlastic form that we will follow when we discuss the fabric uh, structure as a form, we will discuss in detail the anticlastic and synclastic curvature, their advantages and disadvantages. But to understand it, basically two curvature in opposite direction. So, this is from the cable net dome. Coming to the inflated dome, uh, can you gauge the material of this dome? So, looking at the image uh, from a distance, it looks similar to a you know concrete dome, but it is not. So, this is basically the inflated dome being created. So, inflated structure are formed by pressurizing a volume of air okay, enclosed by a lightweight fabric membrane. So, sometimes even I have given this cited this example before that uh, for a you know a game zone in a shopping mall or maybe a local fair. So, we will get something like a structure for the kids like you have a Mickey Mouse kind of thing. So, people are jumping over it. So, it is nothing but a membrane. So, they put air inside this uh, to give the form which is self sustaining and adjusting um, automatically and when you release it, it will be just flatted. So, this inflated dome being created, this is the Qatar uh, in inflatable fabric dome. So, fabric being used, uh, the air is used to give the form and it is being created. So, uh, this is not uh, only for a structure, even uh, this kind of technique now being used to create as a shuttering to create the dome. Now, obviously, uh, uh, for this concave structure or for the huge dome, uh, unless you go for the core building, it is very difficult to make the shuttering at certain height and also to maintain the uh, perfect uh, symmetry. So, what we need to do, we can use take example of this kind of uh, you know balloon kind of form and then we just put the pressure, we just cast the dome as we want or then we just uh, take it out, the, we release the pressure so that this is this will be formed very smoothly. So, this is very good example and it low scale if you use this dome kind of structure, they are again mostly taking the compression and at the bottom uh, you know hoops you will get some kind of tension, this is also proven to be good for a seismic zone. So, instead of having rectangular, this dome can be used for that even for the wind. So, they will also help to have a better air flow. So, taking the uh, aerodynamics and oscillation and also this kind of shapes are being useful. So, not only as just the roof purpose of uh, any building as a decoration, even uh, like for uh, normal structure. Uh, as a building a low form structure we can uh, also made. So, we will discuss on when you discuss about the structure uh, that is preferable for such disaster prone area, we will come back again with this kind of dome form. Coming to the summary, so basically in this we have discussed about the dome and here it is like the basic dome being formed like it is uh, like half the section of uh, your uh, hollow sphere. This is one idea that we had and the other one we discussed on the rotation. So, you have one arch and then you evolve it, uh, uh, revolve it to 60 degree and then we get the form of this dome. We have also discussed about the material, the mud. I have also shown you some uh, dome made of your uh, some branches of the tree as well as some grasses to give the form and then also, we uh, discussed about the igloo which is made of snow and later on like brick machinery, concrete machinery, even the steel, even the cable and then the last example that I have shown you is just uh, some uh, air uh, pressure. So, due to pressurized air, so inflation uh, uh, of these things being done and uh, the type of dome that is a series of dome and but we can relate it. So, where the rotational dome, we also discussed the 
you know onion dome that being used in Taj Mahal or in, even in the Disneyland somewhere we have also seen that particular umbrella or ripped uh, uh, thing that we have discussed for your um, what we call the saint pictures or maybe sometimes uh, like the example I have taken for the US uh, state capital that is there and then sometimes the dome can be of your core built. So, where like uh, you have to align those particular layer of bricks or machinery in so taking some offset in such a way that it will create a form of uh, uh, arch and finally, it uh, revolve and then we can get this dome. Now, coming to the advantage of the dome definitely taking the example of uh, the pantheon. So, it will be used uh, like it is very useful for uh, covering a large span with minimum obstruction, but the disadvantage that we have that we cannot use the upper portion. So, that is why normally being used for the roof uh, uh, for the case and then uh, uh, like it can be easily formed and mostly it is like self adjusting uh, transferring the load. Uh, to the support like this and then uh, the last point that we discussed that this kind of dome or curved form that is very useful for the windy area or earthquake prone area uh, to tackle with that can also be used as a like small unit of uh, as residence. And then also we discuss in modern days instead of this uh, heavy construction we just go with some triangulation. Uh, of uh, your structure with the steel member and then we form the geodesic dome which is being uh, used to create it. So, we can uh, we have some examples on that uh, as well. So, this is the discussion on the dome and their uses from the history to the modern world and uh, there is no end of getting the example of that. Um, please do that exercise to put more examples to this and if I missed out some of the category which is very predominant you can also uh, suggest me in the forum uh, we will get back to you that positively. And these are the some rating uh, reading materials that being repeated. So, you can go with that. Uh, so, the structural analysis of historical construction there you will in this book you will get some example of construction of dome and all how this is being done. So, the main idea to discuss each type of structure one by one to get uh, the advantage their application the type. So, not only the structural form or they are capable to take more load more span uh, is feasible, but as well as the like the ornamentation that is also we need to understand because the subject is uh, basically the synergy between the form architecture and this aesthetics as well as the structure. So, we should also take that point that how beautifully like ornamentation of vault then the arches and then now the uh, dome being created and we can definitely simplify that we can go with the classical one or else taking the new materials and create some good form uh, and that will make a proper synergy without compromising the uh, you know structural safety of a building we can do some uh, you know great creation with some new materials, new techniques and all. Uh, so, again I would like to thank you for take part in this course and uh, next we will be meeting on uh, with a new discussion on the grid structures. Uh, so, moving from arch board and then dome and then we will discuss about the grid and their limitations and their advantages and then we will slowly move uh, to the membrane structure and other uh, structural form that will be a useful uh, you know uh, lecture that will help us to take a decision on the type of structure to be selected depending on the purpose and uh, we can make the synergy between all these uh, you know form architecture and structure. So, till then bye bye thank you.